Hello there. This is Divine TV. My name is Kemi Iwalesi. Your host on this amazing show, She World, where we discuss everything about the female gender. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the very beautiful. On this show today, I have an amazing guest. I would like my guest to introduce herself to us. What if I insist she should introduce me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, my name is Olua Toyin Ohio Alegbe. I'm a media practitioner, a fashion entrepreneur, and what else? I talk for a living. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. On this show today, we are going to discuss something I believe a lot of people have been interested in, especially as Christians. If divorce is a sin, what is not? If divorce is not an option, what else are you supposed to do if you're in a bad, terrible, life-threatening marriage? Okay, that question is for me, I guess. Uh, okay. Let's start from what is divorce? Uh, divorce, if I'm just going to look at it grammatically, is when you sever something from something else. You take it, something is together, you know, like in a group or in a, in a unit, and you take it, you take that thing out. So you've divorced that thing from its group or its membership. So that's divorce. And in a marriage relationship, divorce is when you say, I used to do what I didn't do no more. <laughs> and you go, yeah. Your way. Separate ways, yeah. Okay. Divorce is when two people are separated legally. That is when it becomes divorce, not when I'm staying as apart from you. But when it is legally said, you are no longer a union. You are no longer a unit. You are no longer together. When is it inevitable? Um, yeah, maybe I should. Okay, you said something at the beginning. You said if divorce is not an option, what is? Mm -hmm. Perhaps I should answer that question straight before we now okay. go into you know the details mm -hmm. of it. If divorce is not an option, then uh, let me not go to death first. Suicide would be an option. Mm. Um, psychosis would be an option. Mm. Neurosis would be an option. Mm. Harassment, living a harassed life, would be an option. Mm. Becoming a vegetable will be an option, mm. you know, all of that. Murder is even another option. Yes, murder, yeah, and that's, you know, okay, death. I, w I was going to go to yeah. death last. Murder and death and all of that would be an option. And before death, before all of that, you are even alive, but you are like a vegetable, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you are like a book that's left the shelf. Mm. You can't even think properly. You can't live a straight life. So all these are options. If you are not taking divorce as an option, then you can have all these other things. You have intimidation, intimidated life. You're living in timidity and gross intimidations and all that. And you can't uh, live life to the fullest. So these are options. But would you take these options as against taking divorce as an option? Then that would be the question. Those options you've given us are real. <laughs> <laughs> Bad Hama, options. Hama house of horror. <laughs> <laughs> Bad options. Yes. There was something I saw recently that happened. Mm. Two cases, actually. One is outright death, mm. which everybody, I believe, in Nigeria or even the whole world mm. heard about. The other one I saw about two days ago. A man broke a bottle huh. yeah. on the wife's head. And the baby. In and the, the baby. I Unfortunately, that. that she was holding. I saw that too. They were blooded, the wife and the daughter, or the child. The I don't know if it's a the boy son. or a girl. But the point was, when she was being told to leave, she said no. She's not going anywhere. She's going nowhere. She had blood all over her. And I've seen this severally. I've seen people in the middle of the night, they wake me up 1 a.m., 2 a.m., with blooded heads. My husband did this to me. And I give them numbers, call this number. When I'm following up the following day or in two days' time, they're either not picking my call or they're telling me, we've eh, settled. we've settled it. He has begged me. He has begged me. The family had intervened. He has been on his knees to that day. And all that. 
they don't want to divorce. Mm. Because we have the culture of staying in your marriage till death do us part. The death do us part we are talking about, should it come from domestic abuse? Or is that what that thing actually says? And where is it even in the Bible? Till death do us part. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, even Christendom, you know, we Christians, mm. we're not fair to the divorced. When you just hear that someone is divorced, mm. you begin to stigmatize them and mm. all that. So because of that, a lot of people are going through abuse and life-threatening situations, but they say, let me stay there because I don't even know if neighbor, neighbor B or neighbor so, so, so and all that. Maybe they are going through worse stuff, but they are staying there and all that. Yes, it would depend on your staying power if you can stay. For instance, the person that you mentioned in, you know, the example that you gave, one of the two um, um, circumstances that you, um, you cited. I don't have the full story because sometimes eh, the thing, the matter becomes too gory for me to take in. So I just stay away to protect my... Your mental health. My sanity and my environment. You know, we talk about protecting the environment. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you think that you have the wherewithal, the woman that you're talking about that she said she's not going to leave, I'm not sure because when I saw that and I was like, I wish I could have access to her to find out what she meant by I'm not leaving. Maybe I'm not leaving until this man is taken or something or is arrested or whatever. That she was going, she had all of that on her with the child. Even the child. Yes. And she was saying, I'm not going. And you know, sometimes you say, I'm not going to leave. You, you have to kill me in this place because you want to put stuff in that person's hand. More, you know, more wahala in their hands. So I, I don't know. But some people stay on, like some of our mothers actually stayed on with all of the abuse and all that. I am a living witness. My mom stayed on because of the children. But at the end of the day, she still left in a way. Because, see, there is, is one thing for you to be in a place like, hey, I'm here now, I'm sitting down, I'm looking at these cameras, but I may not be here. Definitely. I may be somewhere else. Maybe I'm in my office and all that mm -hmm. and all that. Okay, so some people are there for all those reasons. And it's also because, you know, I said something earlier. I said even Christians, Christianese people, we stigmatize the person that is divorced, maybe including myself until a few, a few meters away from here. Mm. You understand? Because we just think, oh, God hates divorce. Oh, it is till death do us part. And like you said, should it be from maiming, you know, all of those things, domestic abuse, mm -hmm. physical abuse, mm -hmm. and, and things like that? It shouldn't be. And by the way, divorce isn't a sin. Because what we often quote is uh, Jesus said, uh, don't, don't divorce, don't do this, don't do that. At the beginning of creation in Genesis, I said I was going to use scriptures and all that because I know that we have a lot of the Sahendrin and all that. They are probably watching this. And so they would say, no, produce scriptures. In Genesis chapter 6, God talked about his, I mean, the Bible talks about the creation. How God looked at it and said, wow, I did good, eh? This is beautiful, perfect. Until man and woman messed up this beauty that God made. And from that point, virus entered. Mm. So it's no longer that state. Do you understand? It's not that. So when people come and say, all, oh, you know, like all that, all that, a lot of things have been messed up. That Almighty God, in that chapter 6, God came and said, Man, I regret that I made man. Mm. That was a divorce situation. Mm. But you see, because of the way we've been brought up with reading and understanding scriptures, we would not know. In the, also in the Old Testament, God looked at these people and said, you people are not conforming to design. He left them. That's divorce. We are not by this advocating divorce or people mm, shouldn't no. marry mm. or people should not endure mm. and all that or people shouldn't make sacrifices. Mm -hmm. These are principles that are very biblical. You make sacrifice, you give. In fact, if you're in love and all of that, you should give. You should make sacrifices and all that. But as she said, as you said, when it's becoming life threatening, you have to begin to read your Bible in a way that the Holy Spirit will give you understanding. And we will do that. Let's go on a short break. We'll come back to that.
Enjoy inspirational, informative, and soul-lifting Christian programs such as Christian Parenting and Homefront, Light After Darkness, Fulfilling the Mandate, Kids and Bible, Movies Review, Shepherd Spouse, Kingdom Stars, Things Perspectives, My Next Gospel Event, and lots more on Divine Television. Download Divine TV mobile app on Google Play Store or watch on our YouTube channel. You can also visit www.tvdivine.net. Divine TV and reaching souls through the gospel of Christ. Welcome back. We were discussing if divorce is not an option, what is? I'm still with Toyin. Olu Atoyin, you mean? Olu Atoyin. Yes, so the Laba Laba <laughs> one of Africa. That's more. Oh, yes. Okay, so I was saying that um, we're not advocating that people should not stay in their marriages, mm -hmm. should not sacrifice, should not be giving. Because in the first place, if it's love that brought you together, love is sacrificial. Love is giving. And I always say love is giving without even expecting anything yeah, back. Yeah. That is when it is true love. But a lot of the times, when we come together, honestly, my sis, <laughs> we are coming together for ulterior motives other than love. Yes. Somebody is thinking time is going, no, or my friend has gotten married. The mm -hmm. way she did that marriage, eh, she, you know, she was entering my eye and all that and all that. So I have to also do my own. The relation, the courtship or the whatever you have is not going good. But because somebody is... Yes. So our reasons for even coming together in the first place. You know mm -hmm. the Bible, they say that ah, we, all, we all quote it. God said, um, therefore, therefore, mm. and I think I should, I should look at my note. It's Mark 10, 6 to 9, okay. where the Bible says, therefore, a man should leave his family, uh, his father and mother, and, and cleave. cleave First family. of all, we are not even getting that. Be we, are, we think that it is the woman who leaves. Meanwhile, it's the man who leaves. Maybe that's another topic for another for day. For another day, because you I know, have because a whole really, topic for that. Because it's really broad. Yes, it is. You know, so... A lot of the times, if the foundation of a thing is not right, we can, we can conclude that that thing is not right. So a lot of the marriages that we're even claiming, now nah, don't go into a divorce, enjoy, enjoy it, enjoy it, you know, even if it's painful and all that. They are even on, right, on wrong footings in the first place and should not even be there. And because they are on the wrong footing, there's no way it must collapse it's shiny mm. at the end of the day. But you don't want it co to collapse with your life in it. Mm, that's with your life going for it, for rather. It. With your life going for it. For instance, I don't know if you can mention him, uh, you know, like Osinachi's case. Mm. I'm really tired of mentioning that name. But there's no way, you know, that you won't talk about that, especially in this, you know, these times, mm. you know. I'm sure they said the stories have it that she stayed on because of one thing or the other. We have different reasons for wanting to stay on. I don't want... People to think that uh, as a minister, have he, I, I, have, I, have I have failed. I've failed because we fail ourselves, especially we, women, you know, because we are on she world. You yes. We're like, ah, oh, now wow. Meanwhile, what you are going through, you are not talking, no, but God sees your heart that you're already outside of that home. Mm -hmm. Some people would rather go and be cutting corners and pretend to still be in that marriage. Who are you deceiving? Hmm. Who are you deceiving? If it's no longer working, and I'm not saying if it's just not working at all, but if it's becoming life-threatening, and life-threatening does not even only mean when it hits you only. Some men don't hit you. Yes. But they hit here. Psychological And abuse. that's why I said neurosis and psychosis. Mm -hmm. They turn you to a welfare case. And you see, if it's a narcissistic man, a, a man who does the wrong but puts... The blame, blame on, on you, you and make you begin to feel that you're the one in the wrong mm. and you begin to beg. Mm. God help you that you are married to such a man. You will have neurosis, you have psychosis, you have this, you have all the causes <laughs> in the world. But you will not be causing yourself. Mm. Do you understand? So God is not, Bible is not against divorce. Bible at all isn't against divorce. There's something, I'm now jumping my notes and all that, but it's fine. We'll go back and forth, you know. There is um, Galatians. Maybe we should read that. Yes, I'd like for you to help me read, please. Or maybe before then, just let's go to Matthew 19. Okay. Matthew 19. Matthew 19. Okay. Some people will even say, before you read it, some people will even say that, um, you know, by Jesus said, uh, Moses told them, get a divorce, 
a divorce certificate if you want to put her away. Get a divorce certificate if you want to put her away. You know, some people will say uh, that uh, Moses said, you know, when they asked Jesus, is it okay to divorce, to do all of that? And Jesus said, no, 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 don't divorce. Uh, Moses and they said that, but Moses said they, sh they could divorce, but you know, if you do it legally, like you said, and all that. And Jesus said, at the beginning, it was not so. And that's why I went to that Genesis thing. When God made it, it was beautiful. man, and even in, in the Old Testament, it was said in that place. It was the woman that was that was um, that was um, pointed at. You can divorce a woman. There was no way like you can divorce a man and all that because. In those days, as I studied, Holy Spirit made me understand that in those days, men, husbands, were truly husbands. They were providers. They were sources. A father is a source. You know, from them, provision flowed to their homes and all that. The woman practically had nothing like that to do. It's the man that does everything. They were there for their women. How many of that do you have to do? And see, if you check... So I said Matthew 19, you know, 17, mm. you know, um, 7, 8, 9. Mm -hmm. If you check today, how many men would check that the, f uh, the, the husband is a man, is a husband, is a provider, is responsible, he cares? You know, because husband means that you tend a garden. Yes, yes. Husbandry. But how many men? And if you check, a lot of the men who beat or maim, whether psychologically, mentally, or what have you, those who do that to their wives are usually men who have not clicked those boxes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are not providers. The only thing they are providing is the boxing and all that. And I always ask, why are you, why are you boxing her? There are many people to box. You can even box wall. I'm not even talking about go and look for maybe a boxer now or go into the boxing ring. No. You can box air. The Bible talks about one that beats the air. You mm -hmm. beats the air. Do you understand? Hmm. So, if divorce is not an option, what is? I'm here to talk about the fact that God isn't against divorce. God is against abuse. I'll, so, let's, let's do that, Matthew. When we look at, uh, before I read the Matthew, okay. when we look at God hates divorce, mm. divorce is an act. What leads to it? Are we saying God hates the abuse that leads to divorce? Exactly. Are we saying God hates those beatings that lead to divorce? Are we saying God hates everything that is not wholesome that leads to divorce? Mm -hmm. Because we just tout God hates Out of context. <laughs> he hates divorce. Does he hate the divorcee? Does he, does he hate the divorced people? Because he loves all his children. It was the same God that saw the whole world, creation, man inclusive, and said it was very good. Same God came and said, I regret creating man. Mm. Situation changes. Circumstances changes. I had a seminar a few years ago. And it was titled, Leave to Live. Mm. And one pastor called me when he saw the flyers and everything. Those people you are okay. teaching to leave, please tell them they cannot remarry. So it's either they stay in that their marriage. And I told him, if they stay in the marriage and die, you will officiate the burial. And he said, that was all I wanted you to say. That was, I think, three years ago before COVID. This year, Osinachi died. And there was a message. I didn't write the message, but I shared the message that said, we all killed Osinachi. Because of what we will say if she divorces the husband. And when he read it, the same pastor, he replied me, I never looked at it from this point of view. His view has changed. Don't forget I said he is a pastor. Mm. So whoever goes to him in the past, most likely will tell him, go on and pray. Right. We'll go on a short break again. Stay with me. We'll continue this topic. On She World, where we discuss everything about the female gender. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And the most 
and very beautiful. Enjoy inspirational, informative, and soul-lifting Christian programs such as Christian Parenting and Homefront, Light After Darkness, Fulfilling the Mandate, Kids and Bible, Movies Review, Shepherd's Spouse, Kingdom Stars, Things Perspectives, My Next Gospel Event, and lots more on Divine Television. Download Divine TV mobile app on Google Play Store or watch on our YouTube channel. You can also visit www.tvdivine.net. Divine TV and reaching souls through the gospel of Christ. You're welcome back. I'm going to give two scenarios now, a lot of times, that in the court of law, they will annul the marriage. Number one, a man that knows he's impotent. He has no erection at all. And he will get married. The wife will get to know that he's impotent after the marriage. Hiding under the, we need to be chased before we get married. We shouldn't have sex, which is okay, which I agree with. But after they have gotten married, the woman would not even know we have the culture of silence. She wouldn't be able to tell anybody. Some people don't tell people for years. I've seen a case, it was the third year that she came out and said, my husband had been impotent from day one. Mm. What do I do? Some people were telling her to pray. That is number one scenario. The second scenario is when you lie to the woman you want to marry about things you don't have and you said you have them. So the foundation of the marriage is based on all lies. The mm. Bible says, what God has joined together, let no man put together. Put asunder. Or put asunder. My late Bishop Enni Moses asked a question. What the devil has joined together, what should happen to it? Mm -hmm. Because in these two scenarios, God is not an author of confusion. If you have issues with your manhood, you have no erection, the place to go to is the hospital, not to a marriage. And if you lie to marry a woman, you are obviously not representing Christ. Oluwatoyin, I'm going to ask you, what role should the church play when it comes to issues that lead to divorce? The church should play the role of Jesus Christ, mm. the owner of the church. You see, the church is the bride of, of Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the groom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jesus has, has laid us a good example of what a good husband should be. He's still doing it till tomorrow. So the church should take the position of Jesus, of the word, and not be sentimental about this. You see, there are things that we picked up growing up, including these theological people, you know, that, that are in the church. Oh, no, no, let it not be. In fact, some pastors don't want it to look like ah, somebody divorced in my church. Yes. So they can't, you know, it, this is they, part they, of soul. They patch it up. They, you know, you know, like, okay, no, 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 don't, don't do it. They just be holding on, be holding on and all that. The role of the church is to, to place before them. God said to the people of Israel, his own people, he said, before you, I have placed life, death. Okay. Choose you therefore, the right. one, your option. And he now says, I will advise you to choose life. They should present the Bible as it is. Some of the things that we've said here today. They should look at it holistically and say, ah, in this case, this boy, I know a pastor. Because he saw the trend that a particular home was going to. I mean, the way they were going. He said to the man, he said, if you do not desist, I'm going to call this woman's father to come and that's a pastor. That's the kind of role that the church should play. We should not be selfish. Sometimes the church is selfish. You don't want to soil your profile. Mm. Just like in some churches I know, some pastors don't want to announce death or they don't want to do burial. Ah, let that not soil, soil mine. They just want to do naming ceremonies and weddings and all that. Where is that done? You have, for as long as the earth remains, mm -hmm. is in the Bible, mm -hmm. you will have sick time, you will have harvest, you will have summer, you will have rain, winter. you will have winter, and all of that. So when it's going like this, 
call them together if they are willing to come under the authority of Christ that the church, you know, represents. But if they are not willing to do that, look at it, tell them, give them instruction. I know a pastor, a senior pastor, the, a pastor under him was misbehaving and all that with his wife. And eventually he said um, he wants to divorce her and things like that and all that. Now, meanwhile, he continued to do this, you know, all the things that he was doing. His senior pastor called him and said, you cannot continue to live like this and put this woman to this kind of thing. So go and sort things out. If you cannot sort it out, you are going to be out of here. And the man was angry and he, was, he went about reporting the senior pastor that, ah, look at this, he is supporting my wife and all that. After putting that wife through all. So the church, what the church should do is to act in the stead of Christ. Bring out scripture. Should this person die there? And you said something. You said if, about the foundation. Your reason for coming together. Is it God that joined you? So if it's not God that joined you. And God cannot join you. And you are maiming each other. Mm. You, are, you know, you are murdering each other. You are ending each other's lives and all that. So if you have it like that, they should call them together. Talk to them, make their position clear that, see, as a church, we do not support violence, we do not support this, in as much as we would want you to stay married, because you didn't marry in the first place to go separate ways. You married to be together forever. Mm -hmm. But if that together forever is threatened, so I, I believe that that should be the role of the church. You will find a lot of people saying these days that the church has failed us. When Osinachi died, everybody was saying, ah, her pastor. In fact, I didn't even like the way they were now abusing the pastors and all that because as I thought it was not pastor all pastors. That yeah, that you understand that? that. Ah, and she's in a minister in a church. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm sure they were seeing all these things and all that and all that. So the church should make their position clear. Should put something on the man, if it's the man that is having, you know, and all that. See, we will not take this from you any further. And the woman should speak up. A lot of the times we are not sorrow so keen. Mm. We want to do like, I don't want you to be like my, I'm the one that my own is in. Once we speak, go and talk to your church. The church should be able to be the haven for a woman that is being harassed in her marriage. You, want, you should be able to go to church knowing that they won't just tell you, pray. And it's good to pray. I'm an advocate for pray. I won't even say watch and pray. Because you see, I believe that you can stand on a tree and live with your both hands. People say you shouldn't do that. I say you can do that. If you know that truly it is God that you are hoping to catch you when you fall. But if you have other you know, alternatives and all that, you're just pretending that this is, don't pretend. That's one thing. So if you go to church, church should be able to be shelter for you. Church should play the role of shelter. Do you understand? Church should play, play the, role the role of shelter. Of shelter. I agree. For the person that is, that is, and now we're talking to the woman, for the yes. person that is going through, that is the victim yes. in this case. You know. Yes. Um, we're not saying it's only women that go through domestic abuse. Well, because this is she was, yeah, that's why we're so focusing yeah, sure. on, the woman. on women. I believe the church has a limit to what they can do. Okay. Just as when you are ill, your pastor tells you, go to the hospital, I'll be praying for you. That is the same way we should handle marriage issues. Mm. Not every pastor is a marriage counselor. counselor. <laughs> okay. Let's get professionals to handle some cases. Send them to professionals to handle while you pray with them. Along with them. Because when you are praying and they are seeking the right thing to do, it's easier. Staying together is easier than divorce, really. But the divorce is not the best option when your life it's threatened. is threatened. Mm. In my book, the best quote I had there was from uh, uh, Reverend Felix Adejumo, Funke Felix Adejumo. She said, the sanctity of life hmm. is more than the sanctity of marriage. Of marriage. Certainly. So marriage is good. I love marriage. I love love. But your life is very important. A lot of women are in mental homes because of marriage. Sure. Some are long buried because of marriage. Mm. Some are maimed because of marriage. Some are walking corpses. Some are walking corpses just because of marriage. If divorce is not an option, the other options 
when it is not a good marriage, a great marriage is deadly. And one thing I tell people is, you tell the woman to stay there. Suicide itself, God hates it. Because mm. <laughs> a lot of times you know you are going to die in this marriage. Anything that you know is going to kill you, whether you are using your hand to kill yourself or you are jumping off a cliff, you are still going to die. God hates that act. Some people, because of the pressure from the abuse, they end up killing their children, killing the husband, and killing themselves. Hmm. Why won't you just divorce? Why would we go through all of that? And fulfill God's purpose your in life. your life. Because you, as a woman, you as a lady, you as a girl, you are created for a purpose. Hmm. Don't miss that purpose on the altar of marriage. Marriage is beautiful. I love it. And this is where we are going to end this today. Before I go, what's your last word for our guests? Okay, well, you already said it for our viewers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not for our viewers. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah, so my last word for anyone watching us and you are in an abusive relationship or your marriage is not working and it's threatening your life already, um, do not endure it. Speak up. I'm not saying you have to leave. I'm not, I'm not um, propagating the gospel of divorce and all that. No. But if it's threatening your life or even your mind, because you have to, you live from here, you know, um, speak up to someone, talk to a counselor and all that. Be open. Say everything as it is so you can get help. Do not endure it when you're not enjoying it. God bless you. Thank you very much, Toyin. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm sure you've enjoyed today's episode. Follow us on all our social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and download our app from Google Play Store. I'm sure you will enjoy it. Before I see you next time, I remain Kemi Iwalesi. On She World, where we discuss everything about the female gender, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the very beautiful. Remember, you are very important in the scheme of things. Take yourself seriously. Thank you and bye.